you're dead set on your MCAT being an issue, I would say your undergraduate GPA could be a huge issue as well. Ask Dr. Gray, pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about yourself? I am well. What can I help you with? Yeah. So uh, again, thank you for you know ask, uh, answering these questions. Um, I'm here at Jackson Hospital today. I'm, I don't know. I know you went to University of Florida, so maybe you're familiar with the UM health system. But anyway, um, so my question is that I'm still on the wait list and I am struggling to kind of have cognitive dissonance because one part of me still has hope that I will hear back and I won't have to do an application cycle again. Yeah. Um, and then another part of me is like pushing me to keep studying because I registered for my retake. Uh, I, I pretty much have both my applications ready to submit. Um, however, with my MD uh, application, with my AMCAS application, I'm just going to, you know, have to, I'm, I'm less confident on my AMCAS just because of the timing because I, I'm registered for August 20. So basically, I just wanted to ask you um, if it's all right for me to keep contacting the school because I usually send an update every every month um, and it's nothing super long just letting them know like hey I got this publication done um, or something you know something that I've been working on and uh, I don't know if at this point you know technically they told me that they could uh, by they I mean PCOM uh, I, I don't know if it's okay to say names but anyway it's up to you. Uh, so yeah so I'm still waitlisted there and <clears throat> I was just wondering uh, to what point should I just stop, you know, kind of just give up or fo turn my focus towards the next application cycle? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what what is the appropriate way to communicate with schools um, at this point, you know, since uh, my, my portal is pretty much packed already with different updates that I've sent? Yeah, so so the the first question always is what is the school's stance on updates? And so if they allow updates, great. Do they have any sort of feedback or uh, guidelines on what types of updates they want or will allow? So you always want to follow what the school says first and foremost. And so let's let's assume they allow updates. Let's assume they allow whatever you want to send. So you've been updating them every month. That sounds like a lot to me um, yeah. that, that you're kind of bugging them like, Hey, 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 it kind of it sure. comes off a little desperate, which you are at this point. Uh, and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to make them mad and be like, okay, oh, it's, it's the student calling again or emailing again or whatever, putting in the portal again. So you just, you just have to tread carefully there. Um, at the end of the day, right. As we're recording this, it's the end of June. You should, if you're planning on applying this cycle, you should be focused on this cycle as of many months ago, kind of just uh, getting ready to apply based on not getting in this cycle. And so the biggest thing to do is to try to reflect on your application and, and what went right, what went wrong, what potentially is holding you back. How many interviews did you get? I got two interviews. Okay. So two interviews and rejection and wait list, two wait lists? Uh, only one wait list. I mean, rejections I got I'm probably like... No, from, I mean, from the two like, interviews. Oh, um, well, one rejection and uh, one wait list. Okay. So, well, the wait list, I'm still on it. Correct. Which is not ranked. And yep. it's very frustrating but then the other one they were just like listen we're already full sorry you know uh please apply next year yep okay very generic so yeah so the the question would be why do you think you struggled this cycle with only two interviews i'm, I'm assuming you applied to more than just two schools oh yeah oh yeah definitely um so i i know for a fact that it was my mcat well, I mean, there's no for a fact because you never yep. know what what the what it what it is, right? But I think I believe yep. that it was my MCAT because because it is it is under the average. Uh, you know, I tried my best. I did my 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 master's program. I really up my my almost you know perfect GPA. However, my I know that MCAT is a huge component to it, and I I, I didn't score as well. But I thought you know I I have 
like almost six years of experience with clinical mm-hmm. uh, clinical jobs. And I thought, you know, maybe they would kind of, you know, um, see me like as a ho- like in a holistic way. But I understand that some schools have their, you know, their their standards that they can't just they they just have these rules that they they just won't bend. Mm-hmm. So I, I I think that it's that, and I've been trying my best to to improve that, and I have. Um, but yeah, it's it's really it's really frustrating when I don't know what to do. You know, my the 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 rent over here in Miami, it's like they up it like a thousand two hundred dollars a month. My wife is like, I want to change jobs, and I'm just like, ah, I can't really do much with with this so why i've been trying to why so be, so, so stop 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 for one second you're still living life correct sure yes the, that's true. the, the medical school application and, and applying to medical school uh going through this process does not stop you from living life so if you want to move if your wife wants to change jobs go do that Med- medical yeah. school applications like they're going to be there no matter what and you're going to be That's doing true. whatever you're doing, no matter what. And it's a very, I, I'm glad you got into this because it's its such a common struggle that students have that you're so fixated on medical school and doing this and doing that and making sure you're checking all the boxes and making sure that you're perfect and you never stop doing what you're doing. Because if you do, then the medical schools are going to question everything. Live your life. Oh, that's, a, that's, a good, uh, that's a good point. And that, that's a Thank you so much for saying that. I guess sometimes we just need external validation. Well, at least me, because <laughs> I, I, you know, obviously I respect your opinion and you, you know, this has been uh, something that you've been working for so many years, but yeah, I mean, it's for me, the reason why I say that I can't do much is because I, part of me still believes that, you know, that the wait list that they're going to call me, I, I mean, I even filled out, yeah, I mean, I filled out my FAFSA and it just, it's just like, okay, well, at this point, like you said, I guess I should just focus on on my new application and just, you know, you just do both. go with it. You do both. You yeah. focus on your new application. You focus on living your life. You focus on potentially coming off the wait list. It's a very stressful yeah. time because at any moment – you can get a phone call that is like, well, crap, we just put down a, a deposit for a, a new place that we can afford. We're going to lose that deposit, but oh, well, we're going to medical school. True. You, you, sure, no, and I, you just do it. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, so when it comes to the the updates, it, it sounds like you are advising me to just kind of chill on that aspect. I probably would. I mean, it, it depends. Like if, if they are... If, if they are useful updates, if there's something to update them on and not just, hey, I'm still here. Hey, I'm still here. Right. Hello, don't right, forget right. about me. Right? If, if there's right. some substantial meat to the update, great. If you're doing it just yeah. to bug them and say, hey, I'm still here. What do you think? Uh, is there any update? Um, then yeah. I, I would probably lay, lay off of those ones. Okay, no, that that's fair. That's fair. I just, you know, um, the, the uncertainty is definitely like, it it gets to you. It's the worst uh, for me. I, it's 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 so it's so bad because like one some days like I wake up and I'm so motivated. I'm like crushing campus and I'm doing all of this and I'm doing my car practice. And I, by the way, I I work full time mm. in clinical research. So I'm like I do it that at like at five a.m. I go to work. When I come back, I hit that. And I'm like so motivated. And then I'm like, wait, what if I get a call? And then like all of this. It's not that it's not for nothing, but I could be trying to spend more time with my family and doing other things that I'm putting off now. So I'm, you know, that's that's why I, I'm bringing this up because it, it really is so frustrating. But yeah, no, that, a, that's that's a good advice. It's it's all balance. I I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier. You mentioned that you are, or you did a master's. Why did you do a master's program? So um, I did that because at the time. So there's two, there's two main reasons. One of them is because in 2020, when I started my master's, I was an international student. Um, my wife and I were already getting married at that time. My wife's American. Okay. So, and she also happens to be a, an attorney. So when I kind of did it because I needed a way to stay legal in the country while I was waiting for my my papers to be processed because I've always had like different visas, mm. but it's just kind of like a, to not to give you like a lot of uh, legal jargon, but basically 
I kind of needed something to keep me here on some kind of visa. Yeah, that makes complete uh, sense. So you did your undergrad right. here as an international student? I, correct, correct. And your undergrad GPA is good? No, it wasn't. So that's the second part. <laughs> okay, that's that's what I wanted to get to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that that's the second part of it. And um, it wasn't like complete, like it was like a 3.2. 3.02. So okay. it, it was obviously not good, but yeah. it's also not the the worst of the worst that you can get. Okay. So, you know, I did the master's and, you know, I, and I got the a master's a, in the master's is in biomedical sciences. Okay. So hard sciences, masters, how many credits? Uh, I believe it's 34. Okay. And you said pretty, so, pretty close to perfect. Yeah. It was a three, 3.92. Okay, so 392, yeah. 34 credits in a biomedical sciences. I would say, like, you're, you're dead set on your MCAT being an issue. I would say your undergraduate GPA could be a huge issue as well. Yeah, um, I, I explain thoroughly in my, I try to at least in my secondaries and kind of my personal statements. When I was here doing undergrad, I was alone. Like, my parents weren't mm -hmm. supporting me, and, like, I had to work two to three jobs. So that definitely hindered me yep. as to like how much I could study. Did you, know? you write a disadvantage um, essay? Yes, I, I did. Um, okay. I kind of explained this there as well. Um, and it, I try my best to not make it an excuse because I know that there's yeah. a lot of brilliant students that come here on your on your many podcasts that, they, you know, they're brilliant students and they do just as well and they have the same jobs, if not more. So I'm just like, but it's hard, you know, it's still, it's still hard. Uh, so that's what I did to kind of compensate for the reason, not to compensate, but kind of explain why my GPA, my undergrad GPA is as low as it was. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so, it's great to explain it. I The, the schools don't really care. The schools are like, yeah. you're either uh, academically able to do well in medical school or you're not. And, and I see a lot of times schools just discount master's degrees. And they want to see that undergraduate GPA. So that's one potential uh, other angle to think about is is potentially taking some post back classes, undergraduate level post back classes. But that's more time and more money, which is always a pain in the butt. Yeah, and and to be honest with you, I I really don't mind where I go as an MD or a DO program. I just want to get kind of like in the field. You know, I'm I know that this is what I want to do. I mean, I've. I've had my own company. I've done different clinical jobs and I'm sure that this is what I want to do. Yeah. So at this point, it's just who is going to give me that opportunity? You know, that's yeah. that's what I'm looking for. And, you know, that's who I am. If they don't like that I have a 3.02, then, you know, they, they that's probably not the school for me. Yeah. I'm okay with that, but I just wanted to get your opinion on how, you know, I can improve uh, for this next cycle besides the MCAT. Yeah, w without knowing everything else, it sounds like from a clinical standpoint, you're getting great experience working full time in clinical research, interacting with patients, hopefully uh, shadowing yeah. as long as you're getting that. Uh, it sounds like you're doing research research as well as part of your clinical research stuff. So it sounds like from an activity standpoint, you're doing everything that you need to be doing. Um, obviously, without reading your essays and all of that yeah, and, and understanding how you're telling your story. Um, that's, that's something that I can't, I can't give you feedback on, but if you think it's your MCAT, uh, obviously a higher MCAT score always helps. And, yes. uh, and just understanding that potentially that undergraduate GPA may be an issue as well. Why do you think that? So my master's program is, it's a two year program, right? Yep. Um, why do you think that medical schools decide to kind of like overlook I'm not saying, well, what do you think that they sometimes overlook master's programs? Yeah, so we, we've talked about this a lot on Ask the Dean with Dr. Scott Wright, who's a former uh, director of admissions at UT Southwestern. The The academic rigor of master's programs is just very different, typically, than an undergraduate program. And mm -hmm. you either do well in a master's program or you don't. And, and usually those who don't do well, like, aren't in the master's program anyway. So... Uh, the it, it very similar to kind of letters of recommendations, like 99% of letters of recommendations are probably good, 
right? It's very rare that you're going to open up a letter of recommendation and it's be like, um, don't accept Johnny. Johnny is terrible. Um, <laughs> right. And so a lot of master's degrees and, and students doing master's programs do well enough in them. And so it's it's less of a measure of someone's academic ability, I, I think, is how medical That's schools cool. are viewing it. Do you agree with that? Uh, no, I, I, I don't disagree or agree. It's it's. I, I don't have enough experience analyzing master's yeah. programs, but I, I think that's the general thought. No, no, uh, that's fair. I, I appreciate your feedback. But yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that then, uh, Dr. Gray. I'm going to focus on my MCAT and, you know, keep, keep doing the good fight. And hopefully, you know, this cycle goes better. I think that it definitely helped a lot that I at least got some interviews because um, mm-hmm. at least I know, you know, it, it's still possible, you know, I just got to keep trying. Yeah, keep trying. And and one of the things potentially, right, talking about uh, your wife's job and, and where you're at and rent and everything else is may, maybe you just take a cycle off. Uh, if you're not ready to, to take the MCAT this August, then then delay it a little bit and, and focus on studying and focus on living life and then potentially delaying an application cycle. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gray. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to do that. All right. Good luck.